Thanks for tuning in to this episode. If you haven't yet done so, please hit that subscribe button on your podcasting app. It really helps us to grow the podcast. This week, my paternal cousin Candace joined us on the podcast. She shared her journey through breast cancer. She went in for her regularly scheduled mammogram and was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer. She shared about her experience with negative reactions to implants. Let's take a listen into Candace's story. Welcome to Behind the Pink Ribbon, where we share stories, information, and other content related to breast cancer. My name is Melissa Adams. I am a 12-year genetic breast cancer survivor. I've learned so much through my own journey with breast cancer. I have met some amazing people along the way, many that have become lifelong friends. I have experienced the emotional roller coaster of a breast cancer diagnosis, heartache, anger, frustration, loneliness, and even gratitude. Through this podcast, we will speak to breast cancer survivors, supporters, and healthcare professionals to gain insight and understanding behind the pink ribbon. I'm here with Candace Wright today, and I know Candace because she is my cousin. She happens to be my cousin on the paternal side of my family, which is where my genetic breast cancer mutation comes from. So, Candace, I'm excited to have you on the show. Hello. So... Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your breast cancer story. Um, tell me a little bit about um, how this all kind of came about. Did you find a lump? Did you go in for a mammogram? Um, just a mammogram. I didn't find a lump. I went in for a mammogram. Okay. So you went in for just your regular, regularly scheduled mammogram, and they found something, I'm assuming? Yes. And then kind of what happened from there? What what was kind of the course of, of action from that point? After that, they did a biopsy, and it took about a month, and it came back that I had stage one. Okay. Did they send you for a diagnostic mammogram? I went for a regular mammogram, and then I had a 3D mammogram. Okay. Oh, you had the 3D one. Nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't have those when I was diagnosed. So, But I've heard fantastic things about the 3D mammograms, that there's so much um, – they're, they can just provide so much better information about uh, the breast and just so many different images. So, okay. And then, so did you go in for, was it a fine needle biopsy? Is that yeah. What okay. Mm -hmm. And what was your experience with the fine needle biopsy? It was horrible. It was horrible. Why? They hit my vein, so I bled. Oh, they hit your vein, so you bled. How long did you bleed mm -hmm. for? Probably about 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, and was it painful? Oh my gosh, yes. Was it the, the biopsy that was painful or the, um, the bleeding that was painful or the whole process? Well, after they hit the vein, they had to stop the biopsy to stop the bleeding. So they had to redo the biopsy again. So I had to get poked twice. So yeah, it was horrible. Okay. At the same time, like at the same appointment, not like a different yeah, the appointment. Same appointment. Yeah. They okay. Just, yeah. Okay. So they just kind of took a pause and then restarted. Mm-hmm. Okay. For thir after 30 minutes, they had to wait for you mm -hmm. to stop bleeding. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that would be horrible. Um, and then, so how did you find out that it was breast cancer? Did they call you? Did they have you come into the office? How did that my all My doctor actually, my doctor called me over the phone and told me. Okay. And were you okay with them calling to tell you that news or would you have preferred to go into the office? Probably prefer to go into the office, but I guess it was okay she called me. Right. Were you at home when they called? No, actually, I was out with my niece. <laughs> okay. And, like, where were you? Do you remember where you were when, I mean, most, I was most at, people do. I was, at, I was at my niece's house visiting her. <laughs> okay. And then, so they mm -hmm. called, you picked up the phone, and they tell you that you have stage one breast cancer. I mean, I yes. would imagine there were a lot of emotions that kind of went through you at that mm -hmm. point in time. Mm -hmm. I was just like, uh, I paused for a minute and I just start crying. Okay. Yeah. And I'm assuming that your niece was hopefully supportive. I'm sure. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she, yeah. she was. She started hugging me, told me it's going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you were at least with somebody that you, that you knew. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your course of treatment. What, what things did you have to um, do to treat the breast cancer? I just went and um, talked to the breast doctor, and he gave me an option just to get the lump removed or get them both removed, and I went ahead and just got them both removed because it runs in the family, so I was just like, eh, I'm just getting them both removed. Okay, so you did the bilateral mastectomy, 
And then did you have to do any kind of radiation or chemotherapy or hormone treatment, anything I'm else? Taking, I'm taking the hormone pills for five years. Okay. So is that the tamoxifen? No, actually I'm taking, it's a, what is it called? It starts with an L. Oh, let me go get it. Cause I don't remember. I don't know if it's, that's okay. You don't have to. Okay, um, yeah. I think uh, I'm not really quite sure. I know that there's something called Lupron that some people have taken. I don't know that mm-hmm. that's it, but um, yeah, this is like glycerine or something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I take it for five years. Okay. And then, so you mentioned the, the family history. And um, so like I had mentioned at the beginning, you're my cousin on my paternal side of my family, which is where there is a genetic mutation. So did you go through the testing? I did. Okay. And what were what were the results of that? It came back unconditional. Okay. And so I know at least, you know, the paternal side of the family, um, which happens to be your maternal side, um, is there cancer on both sides of your fam- family, one side of your family? Both. Both. Okay. And how extensive is it? Um, well, on our, you know, on our side is breast, but my mom actually had the hereditary colon cancer too. Okay. And then on my dad's side, my aunt had brain cancer, stage three, and I had two aunts that had breast cancer. Two aunts that had breast cancer on your, on your paternal side of your family? Mm-hmm. Okay. And nothing came back definitive in terms of a genetic link. Mm-mm. That's crazy to have. It just came back unconditional. <laughs> yeah, to have both sides of your family that have an extensive history of cancer, you know, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a lot. All right. So no chemotherapy, no radiation? Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about, um, you know, kind of how things have changed for you as a result of the breast cancer diagnosis. It's horrible. Yeah. Hot flashes. (laughs) They're horrible. (laughs) Well, they had to do a hysterectomy too. They went ahead and did a hysterectomy because they said, um, Breast cancer were linked with ovarian cancer, so I had to have a hysterectomy too. Right. And so they when, put me through early menopause. Okay. Yeah. And when did you have the hysterectomy? I had that, let's see, in October. I had my breast cancer, I had my boobs removed in April, and then I had my hysterectomy in November. Okay. So it was like one right after the other. Mm hmm. And did you do reconstruction? I did. Ex- I did the um, implants. Okay. So did you go through like the expanders and? Yeah, I went through um, the expanders, the fill-ins. Okay. And so from diagnosis to say like your hysterectomy, I mean, I would still say that you're currently in treatment still. You're still on the medication. So in my mind, that's still active treatment. Um so from diagnosis to the point where you had the hysterectomy, what was that time frame? Like six months. Six months. Okay. So that went, that went really fast. Mm-hmm. And I mean, to have, to have your breast removed and to have your, your ovaries removed, I mean, that I feel like would be pretty challenging emotionally as well as physically. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. And so what were some of the things that you experienced physically as a result of having both of those things removed in such a short period of time? Hmm. Let's see. The hormones, <laughs> hot flashes. Like you can't, I can't even barely go outside because I just can't, I can't deal with the heat. Okay. And what about yeah. like, you know, range of motion, activity level, like anything I don't like I used to be able to do a lot like get to the gym and stuff I don't I have like my left when I took my lip nose out my left arm is still numb I still have numbness in it I don't think I'm ever gonna get my feeling back in it okay so did they take out all of the lymph nodes or no they only took a few out and they they came back negative okay okay but still numbness Mm mm-hmm 
And did they say that's caused from the lymph node? Yeah, they said it could take a couple years to get it back. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that has to be challenging within itself. It is. It's horrible. Yeah. And then what about like the emotional aspect? Um, I'm very depressed. I take medication for depression now. Okay. And have you, did you start that pretty much immediately after going through the surgeries? Mm, yeah, I am. Um, yeah. yeah, started about, probably about mm, probably about three months after I had everything done. Okay, and what about mm-hmm. like counseling or support group? Have you ever gone to any of either either of those? No, I have. Like, I joined a support group on Facebook. Okay, and what is that support group? Um, it's called Breast Cancer. And it's like, I met like a lot of nice people on there and like we go through a lot. Actually, one of the ladies I met on her actually came to North Carolina where I live and we actually met and hung out together. Oh, really? Because mm-hmm, she got diagnosed with breast cancer like two weeks after I did. And we have like all of our surgeries, like almost a week apart. Yeah. I mean, that's, and where was she from? New York. New York. Okay. So she came down and you guys hung out and. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we wow. socialize and we talk all the time. Yeah, well, that's uh, I mean, that's kind of cool for for her to come all that way to visit and and to hang out. I mean, obviously, you must have a a great relationship that you've created. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And so, how did that relationship kind of start? Like, did she message you? Did you message her? I just um, I put something on on Facebook on that site, and um, I was like really depressed, and she just started inboxing me, private messaging to me, and we just started becoming like really good friends. Yeah, and is she kind of going through the same things in terms of, like, the depression related to it? Yeah, she's going through a lot. Yeah, she's, she um, she did a reconstruction with, they use her skin and make, because she only had one boob removed. Okay. So she's been going through a lot. Yeah. And so thinking about, you know, the way that it's impacted you and the way that it's kind of, you know, changed your life, and, um, you know, I've heard you say, the word horrible several times, um, you know, and, and the fact that you're using the medication to, you know, deal with the depression, what are some things that you might be able to offer to somebody else that's feeling that same way? Just wish them good luck and hope they can get through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I mean, that's a, it's a hard thing to deal with for sure. It is. Breast cancer is horrible. It is. Absolutely. 100%. Can't disagree at all there. Um, So what about like family or friends? Do they, do you rely on any of them for any kind of support? Um, My daughters. Your daughters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in what way, what ways do they kind of help support you? Um, Well, they live far away. So they, they call me like every day and check on me. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And what about, like, do they come visit? Do they, you know, do you go there? Well, one, I do. I fly down there during um, um, Dallas, Texas, and El Paso, Texas. Okay. Yeah, because one's in the Army. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember seeing that on Facebook. Yeah. So she's in El Paso. And the other one, she lives in Dallas. So, yeah, I fly down there, like, twice a year. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, thinking about your children... Have they been tested for any kind of genetic mutation? They have. As soon as I got diagnosed and um, I had the bracket genes down, they they um, got it done and they both came back negative. They both came back negative. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good news. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly, you know, hopefully yeah. crossing our fingers that it doesn't happen um, to anyone, really. But I'm glad to hear that they're both negative. So yeah, there's the... Theirs did not come back inconclusive. No. Okay. Not at all. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm. And do either of them have children themselves? Yeah. My youngest one has a little girl and she's actually pregnant, expecting another one. Oh, fun. Fun. Yeah. Okay. So thinking about, you know, um, Thinking about maybe women who have been newly diagnosed, they're just kind of entering this breast cancer world. Um, What piece of advice would you offer 
for somebody that's just been newly diagnosed? Got to stay strong and positive. Got to stay strong and positive. And what are some things that maybe you have done that have helped you to stay strong and positive? I just don't think about the negative and I just, if I start getting down, I call my girls and they, they mainly keep me strong. If it wasn't for them, I probably would be like really depressed, but they, they, they make me stay strong. Good. So really kind of leaning into your family. I'm assuming when you say girls, you mean your daughters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you really just kind of lean into your family for that support to kind of stay lifted. Yep. That's yeah. about all I can do because I ain't got my mama no more. So, yep, I, I call them and they, they're like, it'll be okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you have them. Um, and then, you know, obviously you have other family members as well. Do you tap into any of them? I do. I talk to um, Connie a lot because, you know, she's been through a lot. Right. And so Connie is another one of our cousins um, from the paternal side of our family who's been diagnosed with breast cancer as well. Um, so you do talk to her often? Mm -hmm. Almost every day. Okay. Okay. And I mean, it's, I would imagine, at least from my perspective, it was um, helpful to be able to talk to somebody that's kind of traveled the path. Even though our stories are all different, there's still something there that people can understand that have been through it. That's for sure. Yeah. It's, it's a scary thing. Definitely. Definitely. But then I had a reaction to my implants. I had to get them out too. Okay. So what happened in terms of like, what, when did that happen? I mean, all of this kind of took place in over six months. When did that happen? Um, I had them out in March. March of this year? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. What was the what was the reaction? I had sores all over the outside of my skin. And they said I was having a reaction to the silicone of the um, implants. Oh. Mm hmm. And so like you had when was your when were your implants put in? I've had them 11 months. So they took them out. And I, it would have been a year. So, so over the course of the year, you started noticing sores? Mm-hmm. Then it got worse, and it got worse. It was, like, all over them, and they were, like, starting to drain. Oh, wow. So they were, like, open sores? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wh how, why would it take so long for them to figure out that that was kind of what was happening? I would imagine that you probably went in and, you know, met with your plastic surgeon or your, you know, medical oncologist. I, well, I went in and met with the plastic surgeon that did it. And he's like, I've never seen this before. And he actually just straight up refused to take them out. So I actually called a different plastic surgeon and I went in and seen him. And he actually said, I've seen that before. He's like, it's probably reacting to the silicone. So he actually agreed to take them out for me. Okay. That's crazy. And so where did you have any other symptoms besides the open sores? I just had open sores and was getting like little t like fevers because they were open and draining. So I was getting fevers, but, um, my family doctor put me on an antibiotic and then I went to the surgeon and he took them out. He took them out within a week. I had them out. Okay. So was there a, was there a, a leak or anything in the implant that gave you any kind of exposure to the silicone? Cause I mean, obviously they're, they're, you know, covered, the silicone is covered by an outer layer. Was there any kind of leak? He said or? I didn't have a. He said I didn't have a leak, but I guess I, my skin's just so sensitive that it was just having a reaction to it. Okay, and then so when you had them taken out, did you then get new implants put in? I have nothing. I'm flat. Okay, okay, and that happened just in March. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's pretty fresh. Um, and what are your like? What are your feelings about that? I mean, obviously you opted to have implants and then, you know, this kind of happened. So, you know, what, where are you kind of with now, you know? Well, they wanted me to use my skin and I refused to do it because I know a lot of people had so many complications. So, and he's like, well, we can do you more implants. I'm like, no, I don't want no more implants because I don't want another reaction. So I'm just, I guess I'm just going to stay flat. Yeah. I know a lot of horrible. women. It's, it's not very pretty sight though. Yeah. No. And I, I, you know, think that the, the people, the friends that I do have that are flat would, 
you know, kind of agree that it's, it's not necessarily a pretty site. Um, but I, you know, I guess the alternative is, you know, better to not have that reaction, um, and end up, you know, having another issue, um, yeah. with the implant. So I didn't realize that that was happening. Um, you know, that, that the implants were being taken out and, um, so did they not offer like the saline implants? Was that not an option or you just were like, no, I'm just done. I just told him I was just done because he said they're all made with silicone. So I was just like, well, if I'm having a reaction to one silicone, I might have a reaction to the next one. I don't want to go through that again. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. When did you first start noticing the, the sores? I'm just kind of thinking like, if there's somebody else that might be listening to this podcast and maybe they're experiencing some things, you know, what, what kind of things could they be looking for to see like, oh my gosh, maybe there's something going on with my implants. At first they look like, it's just like, like a pimple, like a like little pimple that come to a head and then it just start like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it started getting on the other one. And I was just like, this is not like normal. Like, so when I called her, I actually went to my oncologist and then she sent me to my cancer doctor and then he sent me to a plastic surgeon and then the plastic surgeon, they always like, I've never seen anything like this before. So when I went to this doctor, he said, he's seen it before. Mm-hmm. So he's like, if you want them out, I can take them out or we can give you a strong antibiotic. I'm like, I'm out because I don't want to heal up and have to go through this again. Right. So it started as like one like one pimple on both mm-hmm. sides and it started it, out on one side right and then like like two weeks later it got on the, it was started on the other side and then they just they just start getting bigger mm-hmm. so then it kind of looked like a was it kind of like a boil or was it like the the when you say that it broke up and it broke open and started to kind of drain was it like a creamy or was it clear or like what did that look like? It was just it. Well, it's, it looked clear, but then they got infected. I guess because I mean I didn't put anything on because I didn't know what to put on it. So sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, mean, I was just like, what do, what do I do? And then I, you know, I called this doctor. This doctor happened. I went to four doctors, and then finally, I was like, let me find me a different surgeon so I can get a second opinion. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So he's like, yeah, I've seen this before. So he's like, we can either give you a star antibiotic or we can remove them. I'm like, just remove them. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if that's where you are, that's where you are. And, you know, you've got to kind of make that decision for your overall health and your emotional health. Um, You know, there's definitely something to be said about having to go through multiple surgeries repeatedly. So, um, well, thanks for sharing that because I... I think that certainly will be helpful for anyone that, you know, might ever experience that. I I would hope that it's rare, but I think that's certainly good information to share. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. So, well, we're going to go ahead and end here, but, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm glad that we had the opportunity to talk and share your story. So thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to this episode of Behind the Pink Ribbon. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. If you or anyone you know would be interested in sharing your story, please send an email to podcast at behindthepinkribbon.com. You've been listening to Behind the Pink Ribbon, produced by American Creative Consulting, mixed and mastered at Riverview Podcasting Studios. For more information, please visit designbyacc.com.